everybody. I'm Michelle Adams with Pro Writing Aid. We're back again with Joe Allen, and we're going to go through some more self-editing tips. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe Allen, and she's going to tell you more about what's going on for this month and what to expect. Hi again. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I'm just going to restart my uh slideshow that we'll go into once again. I feel it feels like what is it called? Uh, what's that movie that where things just keep happening again? Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. Deja vu. <laughs> because I am on GMT time. I'm over here in off Little Island um, in the Canary Islands, Tenerife, just west of Africa. And that puts us on GMT. And so thank God I checked in early. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just want to welcome you. Today we're going to talk about the 10 mistakes, uh, the writing mista mistakes that authors make. Let me just bring up my screen share here. And let me do over here. I'm going to go. I do apologize. We're normally much smoother, but we're just going to, oops, escape. <laughs> One second. <sighs> Hold still. From Borean. Oh. All right, we may just have to go all the way back here. See what we can do. And I apologize. Those of you who have been with me for the past hour, we are going to start again. All right, we'll just back it up that way. Okay. Okay, we're just pushing in reverse. Anyhow, as I do that, we'll be talking about the 10 most common editing mistakes. And do we have that? There we are. Good. Everyone, I can see that. So we have the 10 most common editing mistakes that authors make. And this was based on some research. So it was a lot of work going into this uh, presentation today, a lot more than I anticipated, rather than just trying to free think through all this of what would be the mistakes. Oops. Then we... Uh, we're just looking at these as uh, results of the research that was done by different universities. And I've included those on in the references here and the citations. So you can go ahead and reference those yourself. And I've combined them all in here. It's about four or five different results from the universities looking at what were the common errors in mistakes in grammar and punctuation, but also how they evolve through the editor's eyes. So we're gonna look at these mistakes and then we're gonna talk about how to fix them. Um, I will share these slides later. There's a link here to read the article that covers all of this in depth, but we'll be covering it in depth also today. So these 10 mistakes are based around grammar mistakes, and I'll tell you each and every one of them for all you word nerds, so it gets very exciting. We have misspelling and typos that are there, punctuation errors, which are the most common, and I'm sure a lot of you will feel much better seeing that it's not just you. We have citations that are very important and writing, how you can become a better writer. Being a better writer makes you a better editor and so on and so forth. We have different, the word omissions and using the wrong words. This is an area that's really hard to automate. It's very hard to do, but um, we'll talk about that a little bit. Structurally, when to edit, what to edit, and when you are uh, doing this and why it's important to know the different stages of writing and editing so that you can address them correctly. How we're relying on software, you know, never accept all, just make sure you're going on there, the software and the tools, and then how to, um, if you are skipping directly to editing before you're you're ready. You, you don't want to really intermingle writing and editing. They are two separate processes. One is more creative. The other one is much more logical. Even, even when you're doing research, it's still, there's separate types of uh, details being dealt with. So you don't want to intermix those. And then when you're relying solely on the self-editing techniques, 
that's really not the best. You, you should become the best self editor you can, but you also want to make sure that you um, are not relying solely on that. So we're going to conquer all these grammar mistakes is our first part. Let's talk about what those grammar mistakes are. Drum roll, drum roll, please. We have pronoun references, you know, he, she, they, them, who. We wanna know who, and quite often we think that everyone's in the same minds that we are. We make sure the sentence structure, is it being correctly done there? Do you have a run on? Uh, is it parallelism? What's going on there? How can we deal with that? The shifting verb tenses, your active, then you're inactive, you're passive, you, you want to make sure that you're staying in the appropriate verb tense for where you are in your writing and in the type of writing and genre that you are performing. Run on sentences or sprawl, uh, again, knowing when a sentence can be cut down into smaller independent clauses and, and such and self-supporting, that's very important. And these are things that you know you may not know now, but you can learn over time and it's very important. You have the, the lack of a pronoun or antecedent agreement. Again, lots and lots of stuff here. May be exciting for some of you, may not be so exciting for others, but I do wanna make sure that we're actually showing that these are the top ones according to research. Fragmented sentences. And again, when you're using a, uh, Grammar checker, they will catch this, and that's very helpful. Misplaced dangling modifiers, again, knowing the rules, uh, pronouns, if you're capitalizing or not, and then quite often you're using the wrong word or you're just confused about how it's supposed to be used. Literally, uh, those kind of things are very important. So learn the grammar rules and the use the tools and the software daily. And I know that I am preaching to the choir here because everyone's coming through Pro Writing Aid, so you should be familiar with this. But one of the things, having been around for a couple of years with Pro Writing Aid now, is that it just keeps getting better and better. So there's reports and there's different tools and there's different plugins and there's different extensions. So make sure you're using that so that you're constantly learning and correcting yourself, where, where are your weaknesses, where are your strengths? And when you do that, um, you will become better at self-editing passively and subconsciously without so much effort. Not saying you don't have to try, but it'll be easier. Uh, misspelling, typos, very hard on these. Um, you want to use the spell check always. And when you're doing that, you want to make sure that it is set to the correct language. Now, I'm talking to you today in, in English, so, but there's a difference if you're talking to me or somebody from one of the main offices of Pro Writing Aid who would be in Britain and they're speaking British English. So make sure that that is set appropriately because that will affect your spelling. And it'll affect a lot of different ways that you're getting the feedback. So it's very important. If you're using research, uh, you know, academic things like that, it's going to mark up everything. But it, the artificial intelligence is getting smarter and it can identify uh, things that it should ignore and it's getting better and better. So make sure you're setting all of your profile and all of your settings correctly so that you're using that. It's well worth the time because it's a it's really going to help you. So, and then one of the fun, great things is that when you run reports, you'll find out your common errors and you will get better at eliminating them. Now, punctuation is again, part of these grammar, spelling, punctuation, syntax, all these different fun, fun things as word nerds that we look at, uh, you want to get rid of them. So commas, I don't know anybody who is perfect with their commas. It, it's always a never ending battle. They can be omitted, misused, um, whatever. So we have those going on. The quotation errors can easily happen just on different keyboards in different situations. You know, a single quotation, a double quotation, they're one's facing in, one's facing out and they're not doing the right thing. So you need to make sure that they're all working to make you and your writing smooth, flow smoothly and tell your ideas and not distract by showing mistakes. That's what self-editing, that's what being an editor is all about. So we have unnecessary missing capitalization, very, very distracting. So you want to make sure these are all being taken care of. The apostrophes, uh, quotations again, how they're being used, how you, you know, and it's consistent throughout the writing if you're using quotations uh, where you're 
when you say your dialogue is happening. So the absent or dispensable hyphens that are there. So again, you need to learn the punctuation rule. And I know maybe you were paying attention in the class when you were younger, or maybe you weren't, but now you're a writer and you really want to do the best you can. So use these online tools. We use them as professional editors. We use them to, to evaluate all of your writing. And therefore, you should be using them too because it's an equal access here. So use the online tools. As you do that, your mind will start to become more and more aware. There's other things out there. Whoops. There are books, there are grammars, um, manuals, the citations and different things like that. If you want to look up individual, like, is it to, T-O, to the T-W-O or to T-O-O, -O, you can put those into Google and Google it because experience and the brain is interesting. And, you know, when you get into multiple languages or just, you can just be tired. <laughs> The thing is, is it will just respond differently. So again, make sure you, that you're taking that effort. If it's pointing out a problem that you're going to resolve that, uh, you're making sure that you're reading. And I'm not just talking about reading the books and the manuals and, and that kind of stuff. I'm talking about literature. I'm talking about learning to just read for enjoyment, learning to learn more, read more to learn more, those kind of things, because the brain is phenomenal. Uh, you know, children learn grammar, spelling, punctuation long before they're in the classroom being taught. It's in the patterns of our mind. It's in the way that we communicate. And the brain is seeking for this continuity. So again, the more you read, the better writer you will become. And ultimately, that will also help you become a better self-editor as we go along. So the last thing is, if all of this is boring you to death and you're thinking, I don't want to do it. Then just reach out. You know, we have professional editors and they're professional editors all over the world, wherever it is. Don't beat your head against the wall. Get help whenever you need it or when you're just simply tired. That's all I'm going to say. Citations. You know, we get a lot of information off the internet now. And with that internet, we need to know, you know, are we citing it correctly? Are we giving proper documentation of where it came from, of when we acquired that information and how another person could find it again and again? So that's very important. And when we're looking at citations, you should know which style manual you're using. You can have an in-house manual, which basically defines how things are presented within your company, within your school, within your genre, which is within your studies, whatever it may be. So you need to make sure that you're doing that. And one of the cool things is a lot of those <clears throat> now can be found online because again, we're all online <laughs> and there's a citation machine. So you can enter those in there and it will help you. Um, so I'm not going to recommend any in particular, but I'm pretty excited about what I'm seeing happening out there again and again. And of course, then there are the uh, editors who can help and they should be experts in whatever genre that you are working in, not just a generic editor, but really that they know what you need. And when you submit your document for editing or review or consideration, you need to know that it matches that. So for example, in academic editing research, when you're submitting to a journal, they have specific guidelines and you may be following, uh, you know, Harvard or whatever manual gu ma style guide manual you have there. But if you're not following their in-house presentations and their rules, you're going to be rejected. So it doesn't matter if your presentation was right. doesn't matter if it was life-changing. They're not going to read it because you really need to follow by the rules. There are millions of people typing as I speak. So make sure you don't hinder yourself by making silly mistakes that can be avoided by using the references and the tools that are available to help you. Then we go into writing weaknesses. And again, just being, um, being determined, being tenacious, being focused, being the best that you can be helps you develop and that overcomes a lot of these writing weaknesses that you may have at this time but you may not have next year so one of the best ways to find out or get started is to run a report pro writing aid has them find out what your common errors are your uh, challenges is it uh, whatever is working how your how your writing 
is compared to others within your same genre. That can be also very exciting to see if you're matching and, and doing all the right things there. So take a look at that. Also, when you're speaking to a professional editor, um, get an evaluation of what they feel you need because you may need a higher level of editing just because you're still at the beginning of this journey that you're on with writing and editing and publishing. So omissions of words, words that are omitted or wrong words, this is a hard one. And we want to quell, I love that word, let's get rid of them. Um, the spell checker may catch, I don't even want to say will, it may, it may catch some of these, but it won't catch all of them. It's just not there yet. And it might be in the future, which is quite frightening, but um, it's always good. This is really where you need to have a human come in. Uh, and if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do editing, I know that we are in the midst of a pandemic. And if you have written a book and you have edited a friend's book, that does not qualify you as an editor because editors have certifications they have experience, they have, uh, they know the whole process of writing, editing, publishing, launching, they've been in the publishing areas, they are familiar with that genre, you shouldn't intermix, you shouldn't have an editor who specialized in a different genre from the one you're writing, it's just not to your advantage or theirs, you both look poorly for that. So make sure that you're using that and, you know, there are Fiverr and other editing, editor uh, directories out there, Make sure it's it's a matchmaking process that you're finding somebody who matches your needs. And if it doesn't feel right, there's millions more out there waiting for you. So keep moving. Now, this is the, the, the meat on the bones here. When we go into the structural editing here and the blunders that we meet inside that. So what we really need to understand is that when you're at different phases of editing, different phases of writing that affects what corrections and self-editing you're going to perform. So I, I know that we keep going over this and we could have this conversation 10 times, but believe me, it takes a lot to really have this safely and securely in your brain. And if you don't, it's okay. Just go ask somebody, ask an editor, you know, send it to me. We'll, we'll tell you where you are and what you need, but it's really nice if you kind of have a foundation here so that you feel confident in the conversation and that's always good. So the highest level of editing, the, the first stage is when you're still creating, outlining um, and putting together your thoughts, your ideas, your proposal, your substantiation for those proposals, whatever it may be, your whole presentation. And then you're gonna look at it, the structure of it, you're going to look at the content of it and you're going to see, is it developing in the correct manner? With story editing, that means, are you following the story arc? Are you creating tension and resolution and your, your characters have really fully rounded backgrounds so that you are creating the most intense experience for your writers or readers, sorry, readers, readers, readers. We are writing for the readers, not for ourselves but for those who we, whom we wish to take on a journey with us. So make sure that you, when you're at the stage that you're working with a developmental content or story editor who can do that. So, and this is, you know, determining what level of editing determine, is determined by where you are. So if you're still in that developmental phase, then you need a content editor, a story editor, a substantive structural developmental editor who are different from line editors. Uh, they're not going to focus so much on your commas and your <laughs> punctuation as much as they're going to say, this idea is being developed here, but it fell short here and I need more there and you need to substantiate it. And that's very important. So there's going to be a lot of changes, movement, eliminations, additions, revisions that are going to happen after this uh, initial phase. So just be prepared for that. Uh, line editing, which people just refer to quite often as copy editing or proofreading or just editing, professional editing, that most of the time they're referring to or they think that they're ready for a line edit. And those are when you're in the revision stage, when you're no longer trying to hammer out the overall concept and ideas of your presentation, your manuscript, but you're just trying to smooth it and make sure that 
you know, your style is clean, it's professional, your words are flowing, that, that your voice remains strong and you, you're keeping your readers engaged from beginning to end. And that's very, very important. Um, and these two different types of editors, it's ideal to have two different types of editors, depending upon where you are. So that's your revision stage. And when you're in that phase, you're doing, you're dealing with a line editor. And then the final stage, which is what you do, you get your final copy edit prior to uh, formatting, prior to self-editing, prior to uploading it into any book or formatting kind of situation. So you do have, uh, ProWritingAid is a electronic, an online tool, an extension. Uh, it's a grammar and spelling, punctuation and style uh, mentor, they say, uh, to help you throughout. But I would encourage you to realize that you don't need to focus on the commas when you're at the very, very beginning. So it, there are things to help you here. Um, and I, I, will, I will address that just a few minutes from now, a little bit more intensely. And then the final one is proofreading and that's your proof phase. That's basically after you put it into this electronic software or platform and you think you're gonna get this fantastic book, sometimes it gives you a wonderful surprise and your pages are a whack or your images are all and things aren't laying out the way they should, that's when you really wanna have somebody come in. And of course, the great thing is, is you'll have one additional um, professional who is just, they're not gonna, they don't care. I will not say they don't care, but they're not gonna involve themselves with your story as much as they are going to stick to those grammar, spelling, punctuation, and, and making sure everything is correct. And that's, you know, when you get that robotic, absolutely, uh, final check that gives you full approval to move on. And there's a big thing to be said about that. So I understand this can be confusing and it often is because it's not a linear process. As you see, it goes around and around. And this is why, because you start writing and then you do your story and maybe you have to come back and you start editing. You get those beta readers we just talked about at the end of our last presentation and where do they fit in? And maybe they make some suggestions and, oh, that stimulated a whole new, uh, proposal of, of a story or a suggestion that you have to expand or you have to eliminate something, you have to clarify something. So now we're back at that developmental stage again. And after that, then you come into your line editing. So just be aware and be patient that this is just the next stage of, of um, editing. It's the next stage of publishing. It's a journey and be comfortable with the journey don't focus on the destination as much because there are a lot of wonderful people if you deal with humans that you're going to get to engage with and you're going to learn so much from other authors, some other readers, from other editors. So just be okay with that. And I think, you know, if you can, it, you'll feel better. So you wanna compare the purposes of each stage and that helps you determine which of these is necessary. Do you need content editing, story editing? Do you need line editing or copy editing? And I'm including these pages in here. I'm not gonna go in too deeply, but uh, again, this is all references for you. I put some links in here. You can click in and read more. You can spend a lifetime learning like me <laughs> uh, uh, about these different levels and what they mean to you and what you need. But if at any time, you know, you can always reach out to a professional and they should be able to give you a quick evaluation and, and see where you are, talk with you, whatever it takes to determine where you are. But when you're on that developmental area, you're gonna be dealing with the content story editors and they're gonna look at your entire presentation. And you wanna make sure that again, they have experience and success in your genre and that they are experienced and successful in your type of writing, which means you don't have a fiction writer editing your hardcore journal, sub, uh, journal application or what do you say, publication submission to, you know, chemistry. So making sure that you don't do these. Again, there are links here, depending upon what you're looking for, for and what you need, that can all be determined. Line editors, again, are the um, most commonly addressed editors. Uh, a lot of our editing is done at this level. Um, we do the content editing, the story editing. We're the first ones in the world doing that with a, a very uh, highly developed certificate, certified story coach approach, which gives us 38 story elements. But when you finish that level of really tying up the story and the, the structure and the, all those things, then you're going to move on to the line editing, which is, this is when the agent says to you, you know, you, you need to get this edited. 
And you really don't want them to tell you that. You want to come in with something that's so strong that they're going to take it to their internal house editor that they're willing to invest in you. And that's just the way it is nowadays. You, there are a lot of steps. You do not want to create any of your own block blockages to getting into there. So again, make sure that you get the line edit so that they're looking at grammar, spelling, punctuation, the style, the continuity, and all those different things. It's also what you want to have done before you submit to your uh, review committee or publications for any kind of uh, different things going out there in the academic world, as we mentioned. Line editing, academic English editing, very important when you're speaking two languages. It, the, the rules just get confused in your brain. Your brain's smart, but there's a limit. Uh, Nonfiction editing, and then, of course, the fiction with the story editor. We're talking about the copy editors to so the final ones. You have one plugged into your computer, and that would be pro writing aid. They're going to help you. And again, use that as you go through. And copy editing is you're going to take a look of what type of writing you're doing. So again, the point being that you can spend a lifetime rewriting and re-editing again and again and again. You just need to get to the point where I think that the professional editor comes in and validates that yes, now we're done. Now we can move on to the next stage. Maybe we'll never be done, but we can definitely confidently move into presenting it to the professionals out there for consideration. And I think that's very important. That's why we're, you know, we're confident that professional editors are going to be around. This is my favorite author here, Malcolm Gladwell. And again, he mentions it himself. Just keep going. It's never really done. Um, as much as I'm saying to use these tools, then I'm going to contradict myself and don't rely solely on them. Uh, they're very, very, very important. You do need to use them day in and day out. I, I believe in that. But you will never replace that in-depth personal evaluation. I think that you want to hear... Uh, you want to get confirmation, you want to get validation, you want to have the, the golden star and the approval to move to the next level with your writing and that it matches the genre and matches the, the standards for the writing and publishing industry. So that's part of why you use those tools. But then when you're ready, you move on to a professional editor who can give you that. And then of course, you also want to get a critique. And many people will hire a, a much higher level of editing because they really want to go in depth with the consultation or they want to tear apart or dig into the things a little bit more. And sometimes the best feeling is when somebody says, no, don't change it. <laughs> You've got it. And it's just singing. And then that's when you can move on. Um, and the best part is when you're working with a professional editor and you're working with just professional editing tools, you will begin to learn to self-edit. It doesn't happen overnight but it does happen with time and it allows you to uh, become a confident writer, to become a wordsmith, to become the master of your craft. And we wanna help you to succeed and do that. So don't rely too much on solely the software and tools, but learn to self-edit. And what that does is you, when you use the tools and you learn to self-edit, you're gonna get the best return on your investment when you go to the professional editor. It is an investment. It's probably the largest amount of money you will invest into your book. And it's the best investment you can. So when you're looking at that way, you want to get the best return from your editor. The more you know about yourself, the less time they have to fight uh, small commas or whatever, and they can deal with the structural developmental high-end ideas or come back in and, and really make sure that it's all flowing. <clears throat> It helps you get the best return on, on what you've done, your time, your energy, and your money. So make sure that you're using that because it's very much there. The self-editing software, many of you are familiar with it, and professional editors, we're in collaboration. So when you are in Pro Writing Aid, you will see, you know, get professional editing help, get uh, professional editors on the little right-hand side. There's a little button there you can click and we pop up. It's, you know, it has me, but <laughs> it's really the whole team and they're, they're situated throughout the world to help you figure out what you're, what you need. If you, if you are still confused, they can help you do an evaluation there. Uh, it's always good to rely on more than a bot to do, uh, to know what your readers are looking for and how to engage them. 
uh, you're going to keep using those skills that you get from ProWriting Aid and from the other writing and editing tools online. They're going to be applied to your daily writing. So be aware of that. And of course, in subconsciously and consciously chosen, you are mastering your craft. And that's very important. So you will understand more and more what you need for your next book. And I think you should always be thinking that what is that this is not a one time shot. Your writing is part of your your emails, your uh, your website, your communication, your text. And I think that you should, as a gift to yourself, you should not be lazy on that. You need to really always tenacious and um, focused on being the best presentation of yourself because really it helps you. So using the software here, it helps you prepare, learn, and understand. We use it. That's why I'm here. If we didn't use it, I wouldn't be here. So don't skip the steps. This is a very, very important part. And this, now that we've gone through all the word nerd, uh, grammar, spelling, punctuation, that kind of stuff, it's really one of the top mistakes that people make as an author is that they try to edit as the writing. And so we don't want you to skip the steps in the writing and we don't want you to skip steps in the editing. And I really kind of wanted to tap on this just a little bit independently that when you're self-editing, you don't want to skip the steps. And so when you're writing, you're being creative, your brain is being used. And so I would turn off the spell checker, the grammar checker, all these things that are going on there, lighting things up. You can just turn them off for the time. If you're writing paper, no big deal. But if you turn it off, it allows you to stay in that moment and don't worry about it. I find for myself, paper and pen can relieve me of that. Talking, you know, recording in our telephones nowadays and just blah, 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 blah. That's very helpful because, you know, you have a voice to uh, text your dragon or whatever you're using and you're going to go back and you, you have to edit that because that just gets wacko. But when you do that, it allows you to be creative and to hear yourself. You can really talk out what you need and what you want there. So that's really good. And then when you're done for that day, for that, that session or when you've completed whatever your objective was, then turn on pro writing it. Then go in and start editing for the day. See what your your see what your uh, challenges are. Are you still fighting those commas, those parentheses, the semicolon, whatever it may be, and just catch it. But do that with the idea of I've written, I'm done, now I'm editing, and I'm going to do that quickly and be done for the day. So always take a break. Your brain needs it. We are not we are not mechanical folks. <laughs> The best part about us is that we're human, the best and worst parts. So take a break, come back later, and you will approach it with fresh eyes and fresh energy. So it will begin better and better. And so what I'm trying to say is you want to do also when you're doing that. So now once you've hammered that out, then we go through those phases I talked about with the editing in terms you start with the developmental and then you go into the technical and then you go into the final approval stages. So those are important. And we need to really remind ourselves again and again that writing has different and separate processes and editing has separate processes and, and uh, approaches to, to do that. So honor that and just accept the process. It's going to take a while. And for those of you who need, we can always do a little deep breathing and get through to the next. Lastly, um, you don't really want to rely solely on the self-editing. Because with the self-editing, you, you always want to get a professional human eyes on there who are trained and certified in your genre. There are people who are listening right now that would not be a good fit for our company. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you need to make sure that it's a good fit. It is a matchmaking thing. This is your baby, your manuscript. You have worked on this for a long time. It represents your knowledge, your achievements, your uh, voice to the world. Make sure that whoever helps you that they uh, don't change your voice, that they help professionalize it, they, that they help you communicate your message and not your uh, mistakes. <laughs> so let's make sure that you find somebody who's trained and certified again and again and again, because it's very, very important. We have invested a lot of time, money, and energy in doing that. So I believe in that fully. 
And that's why we offer satisfaction guarantees in that. And I think you should only work with people who will stand behind whatever they, they propose to you because again, it's an investment. Don't treat it lightly. Uh, when you're in pro writing aid, at any point, if you get frustrated, you could always send it over a human editor. That's no problem. Glad to help you. Just click the button. Uh, get the best price. The more you self-edit, the better price you will get because they're going to have to spend less time on the harder stuff. Uh, use the writing tools to achieve that. <coughs> Sorry. Self-edit. Always self-edit. Always self-edit. Get some help out there. Keep uh, accepting that you're going to revise again and again and again out there and it's going to help you as you go along. And the strong writing, it comes from using a combination of all these things. There's no one single answer. If there was, I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be talking to you. You know, you would, pro writing able to just, you could just buy it. But it's not how it works. It, there are no magic buttons in the world. So you need to really gain the knowledge and skills and just take it easy. Don't I mean, unless you want to, you do not need to go and get a PhD in, in English literature. You can learn over time, keep reading, be gentle on yourself, understand that it's gonna be even the best writers, our best sellers who come in, who have published again and again and again, because of the way the industry is now, they quite often go ahead and get help before they take it back to their agent. They cannot have their integrity, their reputation in any way questioned because there's always somebody fighting very hard. You know, there's some young whippersnapper out there who's typing as we speak. And you want to make sure that you always give the best presentation of yourself through the writing and the communication there. Use the tools such as Pro Writing Aid. Um, they this covers all the writing genres, all the types of writing, business, academic, fiction, nonfiction, et cetera. And then for those of you who are, who are into fiction writing, we use a uh, fictionary and we are story coach certified there, first ones in the world. So we do believe in that it allows us to be objective and uh, make sure that we cover the 38 story elements from fictionary that not only do you get our expertise and our training uh, as published, successfully published editors helping authors out there, but we are very thorough and that is, it, it's wonderful. And I, there are more people out there, not just our company who are getting certified day to day, but I think this is the wave of the future. I really do. Um, so do so. The editors, those are your final defense. These are the people who fight for you. We are your coaches. We cannot do the work for you, but we can whip your butt in shape and make you realize where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are and help you. Uh, you know, we do offer services that the, you can do summary writing, but don't expect somebody to redo it. It's really yours. So own it. Be proud of it. So if you want more information on that, there's an ebook. It's on Pro Writing Aid. And it's also, we have it on our website. You load it down. It's on Amazon. It's on Kobo, whatever. And uh, read more because you need a combination of all of these to really come up with a strong manuscript that is engaging your readers. That's your goal. Um, without the readers, there are no writers. So again, this is what it looks like. You can click on the button. These slides will be available so we can help you get through on all of that. And just remember, um, as our name says, it's first editing. And then after that, you have the publishing. This slide production is a little bit longer, um, but we'll wrap it up there to answer some of your questions. Gives us about 19 minutes and I need to take a drink water, but uh, we will send these out and we will also have them available on our uh, blog. So if you go there, you can download these or they will be sent out, I believe, to anyone who signed up today. So thank you. And here is Michelle. <laughs> thank you so much, Joelle. And that was great. Oh, you, you didn't know I was an auctioneer before, did you? <laughs> I can go I faster. Can Two, at, two presentations in a row. That's impressive. I was actually watching my time here and thinking, okay, I need to make sure that I'm not going too fast because I can do it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So it's like a little bit ADHD. Like, okay, no, that should take a couple minutes. That should take. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for that. Sure, sure. Uh, we do have some questions. Mm -hmm. um, we'll try to get through as many as we can. Uh, okay, so the first one, it says, um, it's a style question. They say, mostly I see editors online referring to Chicago manual style. 
what should English speaking countries outside the U.S. use? Ah, well, there are different styles out there. Again, it's going to come back to your genre. I would go in and have your editor look at it and see where you're, what you're dealing with. But um, as I said, there can be different style guides and manuals, even inside the editing houses and the publishing houses, because they, they stick to certain ways. And that's always constantly evolving. And I know that sounds weird, but it's going to go, uh, Chicago covers most and uh, uh, so while somebody's writing it here, Chicago covers most, British writing too. <laughs> There's just a few differences and that comes down to the spelling. It comes down to how comfortable a longer sentence would be. I think I can safely say uh, Americans are very more short, not always, don't, I'm not stereotyping, but a, a British, it's much more elaborate and, and eloquent in that way. So uh, I would definitely, it's going to depend upon your genre and what you're doing. So I don't want to lock yourself in, but the Chicago does cover a lot of that and it's updating. So, you know, they have online resources there. So take a look. Google, Google, Google. Our next one says, I'm struggling with being creative, specifically attempting to show, not tell in my writing, but the clarity suffers. Is there a tool or a technique that this user can use to overcome this? Sure. And I, I mean, there is a fantastic, I believe you might find this, um, Michelle, you, you guys have a, a really good um, blog post up about that. And uh, I know that we did an interview with Haley Milliman um, from Pro Writing Aid, funny enough, talking about how to show, not tell. So there, there are tools in Pro Writing Aid that you can use. So this is fantastic. And, and I'm going to let her throw those links in. But yes, use them and go through it. I, I'm not gonna use up all the time to show you specifically, but there are a couple great blog posts as we speak. You can just write in pro writing aid, uh, show, show not tell, and uh, it should come up as one of the top searches. And then also um, with Haley Milliman and myself, it's on the Publishing Power podcast. So we'll cover that and we'll drop those links in there. Yes. But yes, thank you. specific to that. <laughs> Another user asks, what are the specific writing aid software recommendations that you have that one could use? Mm. The writing aid, I'm going to tell you um, one of the, the ones that I really like. And again, this is back to, I'm going to assume we're talking fiction here. Uh, when you go, there are, it's called Writers Helping Writers. And it's, that's a fantastic one for going in and creating your, your, uh, your, what do you want to say, your worlds and the background and the emotional things that are going on with your characters and things like that. Those are really good. Then there's Scrivener and all the others that are out there that are available. But when you finally have your manuscript together or you think you have the bone, the, the structure, you can go ahead and pop that into Fictionary. And uh, Fictionary has something called Storyteller. We actually do the higher professional level of it called Story Coach. And it shows you the storyline, which is very, very helpful and puts it against not, it's not template, but it's the, the general pattern, the general accepted uh, resolution that you need. And that's very helpful. And we're actually now, as we're going into that farther and farther, we're finding that people are saying, you know what, I was frustrated and now I've been able to continue writing my book using this self-editing thing. So again, they're not separate but they complement each other. And then of course, um, there's loads out there. You can just go on and on and on. What's most important is it fits your personal style because if, you know, if you're an old, uh, old style kind of person and you want to do a, a storyboard and you've got post-it notes and you're doing these, uh, a friend of mine here, she is saying, what was it called? Um, the crazy wall. Like it looks like when you see the murder mysteries and you've got the lines going across and fun things like that. For some of us, um, it stimulates that creative part of our brain and it lets us see it from a different perspective and using our tactile selection is much better. Other people are going to stay in that digital mode. And so then they have the pages and you can move and cut and paste. And I think you really need to check out of this. But off the top of my head, um, I definitely, definitely would go check out the Writers Helping Writers and or Authors Helping Writers, Writers Helping Writers. And I would... I love Fictionary, and uh, then there's loads of others that you really need. Most of them all have a trial, so go ahead and check those out. And not, it's not a one-size-fits-all. 
never is. So if you like it and you use it, then, then stick with it. But if you don't use it in the first week or two, it wasn't for you. All right. Um, the next user says, I am uh, British and writing a novel set in the UK. Naturally, I tend towards UK spelling and dialogue conventions, but do not want to alienate a potential US audience. Any advice? I honestly do not believe you're going to alienate any uh, American because if your story is taking them into that world, and your characters are there, then you need to maintain that voice. In the same way, if you're going to read Br'er Rabbit, you need to have that Southern, you know, please don't throw me in the old Briar patch. And they, it's written in those terms so that you are taken on the adventure. So really um, just make sure that you have an editor and beta readers who have the same background that your story requires so that it is a correct match, meaning that they speak British English and they're well aware of the, 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 the style to stay within the style preferred for your genre. Okay. The next person asks, is it a grammar mistake if you, if you intended your character to speak naturally? Natural speech is often in incomplete sentences. Dialect and using dictation, diction is very important in when you are conveying dialogue. So those are when you get to break the rules, but you need to do it correctly. So if you're not consistent, then you're not doing it right. Therefore, you need to work with someone who can go through and make sure that you were consistent in the presentations. Those incomplete thoughts and, and errors should not happen in the descriptive narrative parts where it's telling about the actual story. And I hope that is clear enough, but as long as you are consistent, of course you can use the magical ellipse to kind of drift off into your thoughts or whatever, but uh, you need to use it correctly. Okay, is there an industry standard certification for editors? Ooh, good question. There are different, well, and we were just talking about this with our presentation an hour ago. <laughs> um, there are all kinds of organizations for um, editors and it's just like you have uh, the Bar Association for lawyers and things like that. And I think that shows a dedication and a commitment to continuing education and things like that. There are certifications out there right now. Uh, as I mentioned, we are the first, uh, what do you call it? enterprise certified uh, fictionary story coach editors in the world. And that's available to the editors. And that's a combination of uh, artificial intelligence or, you know, this, what do you say, intellectual assistance, helping us be better editors by not overlooking any of 38 elements that are in every, not the chapter, not the book, but in every scene. And it is immense because there are things which we do naturally and as humans, we, we sometimes get tired and we may overlook something in a particular area. When you have a checklist in the same way that a pilot has to check off their checklist before they can fly, it makes sure that nothing is overlooked and you're in the safe zone. So that's why we've chosen to do that. There are um, courses in universities. There are uh, internships in, in publishing houses. The best editors and many of our editors on staff, they, um, they have that experience in their background. And I do think that's important depending upon what you're doing. But again, you can have the most overly certified person in the world. Please make sure that they're a personal match for you and your baby, which is your manuscript. <laughs> the dating service. And I would be careful because I, I'm sorry, I just want to speak a little bit more on that. When you go into a directory, we're not a directory. We don't put all our editors out there and then let you pick and choose. Um, we actually vet them and then choose the one according to your genre and your type of writing and your experience and your needs. And then we assign them to the editor that's best done for you. I think that that's a better service for both you and for the editor. And that's a really weird thing to think, well, but it is important that they're well matched with you. And it doesn't always happen. Sometimes, they, you know, that doesn't work, but you can always ask for a, a new sample, a new um, example of an editor. And so that's no problem. But you really need to make sure that um, they have success in their background, that they can show you a sample of what style of editing they provide, that they understand your voice and that you feel confident with them. And if at any time you don't, then move on to the next one. But I would not spend, and you can, 
because it's the internet, years interviewing, selecting, and getting to somebody who you think, oh, they have a great price. I could do with this about careful because they also may disappear. They may not deliver as, as promised. And uh, there's a lot of bait and switch out there. Okay. Um, the next person asks, am I right in thinking that you have to complete the first draft before you embark on a structural or developmental edit? Pretty much. <laughs> you really, ideally, that is the best situation. If you have, if you're at a point of um, you have the bones and you're just trying to lay the meat on, it's, it's well worth going ahead and throwing that into an analysis, either with a professional editor or throwing it into, say, the storyteller um, to, to see there, it may work. I mean, I can't say a straight across the board, but if you have a beginning, middle and end and you have conflict and resolution, you have the characters piled out, it will help you see where your weaknesses are. And that's really, really important. So you can either use it through um, the, the assistant with using a software or you can have the editor do it on your behalf. The advantage of using an editor is that there you're gonna have more of a back and forth communication depending upon what you engage in, what kind of uh, consultation you're going into. But yeah, ideally, if you can complete that, that's your best starting point, but you need a beginning, middle and end. <laughs> okay, the next person asks, if, you, if I went to publish for both British and American markets, do I need to revise or adapt for differences in punctuation rules? For example, Americans put quotes outside of punctuation and British do the opposite. I think, you know, the easiest selection, I wouldn't, I, I think that that may be too much. I, I would go and just, who is your favorite author that you're emulating and where, how are they doing it? And then just be consistent. Again, the readers are forgiving when you are consistent because they know what to expect. It's when you start changing bits and pieces because you're trying to adapt, you may lose the, the comfort, the voice, the ability to take them on the adventure. So I would go according to where you are or where your story is located and what the majority of your um, audience is. And I would just choose one and have, you know, also have a professional editor take a look. They can give you feedback, but I, I don't see them saying that we should have two different versions on a, no a novel, if, if that's what we're referring to. Now, if it was a um, nonfiction, you know, inspirational, motivational kind of thing, then I think you might, you know, then you probably do because you're speaking to uh, the individual versus the story that you're telling, engaging the readers. Okay, and the next question, if your profession is writing, is editing tax deductible? If, you're, if your profession is writing, well, what's the answer to that, folks? contact your tax advisor, <laughs> contact your accountant. Um, there are a lot of things in this world. And if you are an American, you're going to have a better answer to that than say other parts of the world. And I only know that because I float, I'm one of those digital nomads in the world. And depending upon where I am and where I'm getting paid, it determines what I can or can't say was an expense according to the rules of the land. But contact your accountant. I can't tell you that. If you're lucky. <laughs> okay. Uh... I know, that, and just in response to that, I know that with like academic editing, uh, when we do editing for universities for theses and dissertations, uh, that can be part of your expenses. And I also know that quite often you have internal uh, master service agreements in which you are the qualified. Uh, provider for those services and that many of the university professors and department heads, uh, it's paid for by the university because it's part of the, a part of their tenure and it's also part of their job requirements. So, you know, there are different things, but yeah, you know, don't leave that undone. It's a very good question. Just figure out how you can. I'm not gonna say no, say figure out how you can. Someone else has asked, does first editing have a free version and what's included? We are humans. We provide a free sample 
but we do not um, have free editing. <laughs> so you send in your document or a portion of your document if, if need be, and we can give you a, you know, within 24 hours, we have that assigned to one of our editors who is working in your field, and then they will send it back to you with uh, just a quick, a quick evaluation of what they see your strengths and weaknesses. And then they will also so recommend it for you what level of editing you need. So yes, definitely come in and check that out. Um, not everybody does that. So irs.gov, I love that. <laughs> so contact the government. <laughs> Sorry, uh, reading as I'm talking. That is fine. And we just have one more person asking about Fictionary. I'm going to drop the link for you in the chat so that if anybody is interested in more information on Fictionary, you can go right here. And, mm. and the great okay. part is, is when you finish doing your self-editing in there, then we are on the other side of that. So if at any point you get fed up and you don't want to do it, you can hand it over to us. But the cool part is you're using the same tools and all of the inline notes, all of our feedback, all of our, our uh, communication as a professional editor, because we're doing the story coach editing is inside that same software. And then you can access it after we've helped you to, um, to do all the revisions. So it's a really good back and forth. And if you, if you're a person who likes to do it all yourself, go ahead and use the storyteller and then send it to a professional for the line editing. Or if you're really frustrated or you don't have that complete developmental edit that the other person was asking about, then go ahead and, and uh, you can get a story coach immediately and we'll be happy to help you with that. And you can contact them and, and or us in regards to how professional editors use that software. All right. Well, we are just about out of time. Thank you again, Joellen, for being so gracious and doing this presentation two times in a row for us today. <laughs> no problem. No um, problem. My pleasure. The replay will be posted later today and the slides will be sent out. If you have any questions um, for us, please email us at hello at prowritingaid.com and we'll be happy to answer your questions then. Um, but Thank you again, everybody, for attending, and thank you, Joelle, and we'll be back. And in the meantime, we'll see you on social media. See you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.